Hey folks, carburetor issues when it's cold out. Come on, let's work on this. All right, explanation time. What am I having to do here? Well, I am having issues with this engine where it's running lean and it knocks when it's hot and it has issues idling when it's also hot and not in gear. And that's, I know for the AMC folk out there, I know especially for the Eagle folks, this is a common problem with these carburetors. They do that. No, I have not had my jets um, drilled out, so that may complement a part of the problem, but it's gotten significantly worse ever since I rebuilt the top end. Even though the carb itself, I know, is not the problem. So, I've gone around, I've verified all my vacuum lines, I've verified it's not an electronic problem. There we go. And I have pretty much come to the conclusion, um, the jet, one of the jets has to be plugged in here. Um, it's got to be an issue with the carb. So as much as I don't want to do this while it's cold, i got to now pull the carb off the car and do a visual inspection, which, in which involves a partial teardown. Uh, what other vacuum lines I have to leave here? I'll need that. I'll unplug that. That can stay. Uh, that can stay. Where's those sockets? And let's see, is it a quarter inch? Yes. Think. Yep, it is. Top air vent. Side air vent. And can I get that off without breaking anything? Alright, there we go. I can just go out of the way. Unplug the electric choke. Unplug our electric solenoid or idle hold solenoid Solvac. Unplug ported vacuum. I believe there's another one here. Oh, there's another one back there. Can I reach it? Yes, I can. Kind of. Kind of? Okay, it's off. And that'll do the PCV and the charcoal canister. And I believe take you off. Where did I put that screwdriver? Okay, so well, I gotta go around the other side of the camera. There we go. So the back of these electronic feedback carbs have, it, it's a stepper motor. It's a two-phase stepper motor. And it's very common for these, um, the plastic connector to break its tabs off back here. And it can either somewhat unplug and cause an intermittent failure, which won't throw a check engine light because there is no check engine light, or it'll unplug entirely and the only feedback mechanism it has for the carburetor stops working. So I have this piece of welder's wire right here which hooks around the back two um, screws that hold the carburetor together and this just keeps the connector pulled in and I've not had it fall out since okay so oh yes uh, throttle return spring there's actually two on here so oh hey other maintenance I have to do because this buddy here you notice how this isn't moving when I push that down? That's because the detent here and the point here on the end of the shaft has come loose. 
So that's gonna have to be repaired while the carb's out. Fun. So two springs had to make up for now. When we're done here, I'll be able to put just one back on. And I think, oh, there it is. My throttle linkage. Just kind of let that fall back. And that should be everything. Oh, a fuel line. All right, for this here, get your rags ready. This is also a point here to say that you should be, and I really hope you are, Make sure that the engine's cooled down before you get to this point here. Otherwise, any oil, uh, fuel you leak down, remember, this is a cross-flow head on the 258. Your exhaust manifold is right down there. If you're doing this while it's hot, you will spill fuel out of this line in the bowl, and when it hits the exhaust manifold, it's very likely to almost spontaneously combust. Not what you want. So I'll put that down there to catch a bit of it. I'm not going to catch all of it. Two wrenches, I believe it's a one half for the fitting here. And the brass fitting here, which actually holds in your needle valve, is 9 16 There we go. And, oh, that's not too bad. So what I want to do is I want to keep that and just wrap this around the rag around it, but also use it to pull it back. And there will be gas that's going to spill out of here. Now is it a half inch for the four nuts which hold the carb down? No. I do believe it's a seven sixteenth. Man, it's tight in here. Oh, there's extra vacuum lines I've missed. There's one here that you cannot see for the Solvac. And I'm just gonna roll that back and forth. Because it's one of the few fittings on here which are plastic. And a Solvac is not a cheap replacement. There we go. And there's another ported I think there's ported. Uh, yes, another ported vacuum down here, I believe, for the EGR control. There we go. All right, and now I can reach it. Can I reach it? Yes, I can reach it. That one's already pretty tight, so I know it's well, at least not this one that's leaking. Could be I've put the gasket on incorrectly after the top end rebuild. Man. Okay, I gotta take this off. Now, keep in mind, when you remove your Solvac, you're also taking the two front bolts off of the front of the carburetor, which will keep the bowl sealed. So I'm gonna actually put those screws back in. Go. So back's out of the way. Okay, now I got a better view of these things. I do believe, yes, each one has a washer underneath it. One, and a washer. You're gonna come out on me here, or you're gonna fall. Oh, it's a lock washer, okay, we'll leave that. And I'm just gonna move on to the next one. This video will not be a complete rebuild 
of this carburetor. I've already done this. This was done last year, actually, in 2019, if you're watching this, not in 2020. Oh, come on. Man, this is a tight fit. Good to know this one here wasn't loose either. Okay, there we go. Well, I'm actually going to move that over there. Actually, the springs. And that one. Like, there shouldn't be any gunk or anything on these threads because I just pulled it apart. This one's going to be fun. And my brakes are in, the brake booster and all that's in the way. Oh, there we go. Mental note to myself, there's still three loose lock washers on this carburetor. Oh, I stand corrected. Uh, this lock washer has come off. So, we have two loose lock washers. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. And I'm going to feel around and find that last one. There you are. Come on. My vacuum lens are in the way here. Let's move the PCV up there. And can I move my select drive vacuum line out of the way? It's slightly, I can. I gotta figure out where that nut is again. There it is. And now the wiring is about to lose its clamp. I am cold. I really don't want to be out here. Could you please, car, if you can understand my please, stop with... Wow, interesting. Is that oil in there? Oh, yeah, it's just oil. Okay. That's the PCV for you. You will always get a little bit of oil blow by on an engine this bad, or this old. So the PCV having a bit of oil deposits in it, there's nothing too much to be concerned about, though I would recommend every couple of years um, the PCV line that you have running from your PCV to the carburetor, change it. I mean, you can clean it, but I would recommend changing it because oil with fuel that just happens to get into it over time will cause even this hose here, which is rated for a fuel line, um, will cause it to swell up and crack. It's actually doing it on the other side of the PCV where it connects to the vapor canister. Come on. Okay, there we go. I got it spinning with my thumb. Watch as it flies off. Okay, very carefully. Got it in my fingers. There it is. Okay. Now, nothing should be on the carb. Well, actually, there is. Can I get those lock washers off now? Nope. So we go straight up. And I'm going to try and retrieve all three lock washers without dropping them into the abyss that is down here. Okay. Come on. Come on. And she's off. Give me a moment. Okay. 
three lock washers, four lock washers, one, two, three, four nuts. Okay, so what I'm looking for here is to see if there's any damage on the gasket. What is that? Just gas, okay. So this is, ah! It's broken right here. Okay, so this will have to be changed. Though it is from side to side. That's a very interesting find. It is also oil and gas soaked. Let me pull that off. What does the bottom one look like? Bottom one looks okay, but I do believe, looking at this, I have installed this upside down. Um, making by note here, you see these passages right here? Those do line up with spots on the carburetor. I had that facing upside down, so those were actually, I wouldn't so much say blocked, but restricted. So that is very interesting. The other thing I'm noticing here is that, and you probably can't see it in this light, is, no you can't, um, this side of the barrel, this is dry, like there's no gas here. But this one here is seen a little bit more gas. So that could mean that the jet on this side is getting a bit plugged. We'll look at that. Anyways. I'm going to put that back on there. Actually, I'm going to take that off for now and inspect down there. It looks fairly clean. Verify my fitting here for the brake booster and uh, I forget which vacuum line here. Oh yeah, it's various vacuum accessories. That's still on there tight. That's not broken. These all look good. I don't see any nicks, gouges, corrosion or anything on here. So that's all right. Okay, so now we can determine we found one problem. I'm going to move on to the carburetor here and figure out if I screwed up rebuilding that last year. Oh, yeah, and one other thing here. Just like we went and took a rag here to block off the fuel line so that, well, any weeping gas gets caught up, at the same time, it prevents stuff from getting in there. The same applies for the manifold. Take a rag and plug each hole. Seriously, it's that easy because stuff will find a way to get in there and there's only one place to go after it gets in there and that's into the engine. Don't let that happen to you. Okay, so the carburetor is now out of the car. Here it is right here. But it's still got gas in it. Um, this is gonna take me the rest of the night to open this up air it out and make sure it just doesn't stink up the house with gas. But through the magic of editing, I'm going to be able to reduce this down to a snap of the fingers and we'll be on my uh, work table and my work surface, nice, clean, ready to go pull this apart and figure out what I did wrong, if anything, or if it's just dirty. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, so the next day, this has spent a fair bit of time evaporating. And we are now ready to do the inspection here. I'll grab a couple of screwdrivers. Now, the first thing I'm noticing here is I screwed this up during the rebuild, uh, no pun intended. I actually have my choke screw uh, adjustment screw and my kick screws in the wrong spots. I'll deal with those ones later. That's not what my fault is, I guarantee you that. Um, I need to get the top half or the top third of the carburetor removed, and that way I can get a better look inside. To do that, I will take a screwdriver and I will take off uh, the choke linkage here. If I can pop it off, there we go. I'll just put that there. And on this side, same thing. There we go. And if you're noticing that the cover is missing here, yes, I just took that off quite simply so I could evaporate the contents of the bowl faster. Okay, so I will... How do I get that off? Oh, I can't yet. Okay. Now 
that's out of the way. And I have this over here for the accelerator pump, which needs to come off as well. go comes off so we have six screws two four six they are different lengths What I'm going to do here, because I want to reuse this gasket, so loosen these screws. Oh, no, wait, never mind. I think it's already, yeah, that popped loose. Normally, these will stick together, and I'll just kind of tap them with a hammer, and that'll jostle it off of the gasket so I don't have to deal with that breaking. Come on. go all right and now I could just lift this off oh no I do see the gasket sticking in the middle can I carefully there we go And I forgot about the choke unloader. Damn it. There. All right, before I go on to that, just a quick visual inspection here. I will want to verify that. That looks okay. Uh, this still looks okay. Accelerator pump looks fantastic still. I don't see anything wrong with there. I don't see heavy carbon buildup in the throttle body. So that looks okay. I know take the gasket and I'm just going to place that back over there we go and everything lines up as it should all right so I'll put that aside I want to look now at the center body there's my check ball down there that looks good Spring looks good. All these adjustments should still be valid. But now I want to inspect on the jets. And where did I put that there? Hmm, that one was loose. That one was loose as well. Okay. That's a discovery. Pull that out. No, it's not plugged. I'll pull or I'll loosen the other one. Yeah, okay, no, we're good. And that one seems good as well. Yeah, that's clean. That came off, and there's our two jets. And they do not 
appear to be plugged. Damn, okay, so what the hell? Visual inspection there. Yeah, those are clear. Uh, everything here looks clear as well. Hmm. Where did I put that? I just had tools walk away on me. There we go. Is that check ball stuck? No, it's in there. Okay. So, I'm not seeing anything plugged. That all looks good. Huh, really? Was that it? Honestly, I'd be kind of disappointed. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning here and we'll get back to here and we'll try and deal with this problem over here. Okay, so this turned into a little bit more than just a gentle cleaning. I ended up having to pull almost the entire carburetor apart for a bit more of a general overhaul. But it's still not a rebuild, okay? So for the record, this is not a rebuild video. We'll get to that at some other point. So instead of me going out and using a solvent degreaser on this, I actually used um, a Gunk brand engine cleaner degreaser. This is the biodegradable multi-surface citrus based one. Um, it's, well, it's not as chemically, um, so it doesn't get rid of all the grime, but it does a good job getting rid of all the oily film and other nastiness on there. So now we can put this thing back together. So while it was apart, I did a bit more in terms of inspection. Um, this all seems fine still, so it wasn't a problem there. And whatever it is now, it's all been blown out because I've gone over and cleaned pretty much everything in this carburetor. And I also did some maintenance. So remember how this was loose here before? Well, we now have a screw here and there's a Loctite nut in there. Uh, there is still a little bit of play in the throttle shaft here, but I still can't see it being a significant vacuum leak. So I'm gonna let that pass. And I was also finally able to get this off. It was causing me problems during cleaning, but we'll have to put that back together as well. And, well, for the most part, everything else seems fine. Like, I'm not doing any measurement adjustments here or checking on anything like that. So, all right. Well, then the first thing I'm going to have to put back together here is <clears throat> our throttle assembly. Also, while I was in here, I did have the insulation on this uh, throttle or wide open throttle switch go bad. So I've just gone with some liquid electrical tape and put that on there. That goes on there like that. When the throttle opens, it turns, I can't do this with one hand, it turns like that and hits the switch and just tells the computer that the throttle's gone wide open or up to 15 degrees before wide open. And that goes in like that. And you just drop screws in. go <clears throat> and I'll put the um, electric choke back on in a bit here so first thing we want to put on is the gasket now I had a problem when I took this apart to clean it and that is the gasket didn't want to come off so it's actually in this state here where it's actually had the surface material come off this is no good so normally this means well you're screwed you can only get these as part of a rebuild kit which I have right here. This is the Napa Echelin 2-5671C rebuild kit for the Carter 2BBD feedback and non-feedback carburetors. 
There are extra parts in this kit, so don't panic if you get one, you have extras. What you do, it's a good rule of thumb if re you rebuild your own carburetors, um, take all the parts that you remove from the carb during rebuild and just put into the box and hold on to this until the next time you do the rebuild and then just cycle those parts out again. The idea is that if anything goes catastrophically wrong, such as this gasket here, I still have a used part I can fall back on. And if I go through in here, uh, oh, is this here? There it is, okay. So I have this one here, it is used, but yeah, that's the same. That there is still incredibly viable. It's not broken, it's not shrunk, it's not damaged. It doesn't smell like it was used too much, though it was obviously in a carb at one point. So we're gonna use that. And this one here, I can, well, I'll put it back into the bag. And we'll just put that back off to the side again. All right, so you go on like, actually, it actually has the indents already on it. That. So there and there. for screws you What's in your way? Oh, that's in the way. There we go. Okay, and I can't, don't crank these down yet because remember I can't put the big screws on this side yet because the top half of the carb's not installed, not assembled. Okay, so what I want to do next is I will take the small check ball and that goes into this opening right here. There is a gasket which goes over that. There we go. And then our jets go, well, no, sorry, we're not there yet. And this goes down in place. And then our jets, and these are not blocked, they've been cleaned. Okay. And I'm after you. I'm after you. There we go. So that's in. And then I actually also took my jets out as well to clean them. And I will go and I will drop those back in. go and yes these can be difficult to put back in do not cross thread anything and make sure they don't come loose either there we go all right, float time. And the pin is still in there. I verified the floats are not corroded. 
Um, we don't need to make any adjustments because we haven't touched that. All right, and we'll take our brass insert, we'll take our needle valve, drop it back in, and there is this washer. I should be using a proper wrench, but should be all we need. U-shaped retainer goes in there, and that just keeps the pin down. And then this little wing assembly here, which sits like that. Okay, and I believe we can now put in the larger check ball, this right here. And that drops down into the larger hole. And then the spring here drops down into there. All right, so we now have the throttle body attached. We have the center portion attached. I have this all here. And I do believe I now have everything in there and everything is nice and tight. So what I will do is I will keep the gasket on this one here because it wants to stay in around the pump. And I'll just drop it down and make sure, and you can't see this, but I want to make sure the two pins here seat correctly. And I'll just Lock them in. Okay. Come on. There. That is honestly one of the most annoying parts of working with these carbs, is getting those pins lined up and in. There. Oh, and now it's done that. Okay, this is normal. Again, if you're working on these, this little lever right here, that's actually the carb vent here. Sometimes if you go, to, if you overexert this, which happens, it does, don't worry. Um, you can pop over it and it won't go back down. That's fine, just lift it up and there you go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to now take two more carb screws and the tag and I'll put the middle screws back in. And that way those pins will stay seated and the gasket will stop shifting around. I won't tighten them down too much yet. All right. On the side here, we have this. I'm just gonna put that back into its spot with the choke. And I'll take one of our little clips and I'll snap that back into place. And then I have this piece here, which is the linkage that goes from the throttle up to the pump. And I will put that in like that. And again, I'll grab another one of my little clips here, and I'm gonna have to finagle that in. At this point here, since we have it closed, the check balls are not going to fall out. So you can tip it upside down. And seriously, this one sucks to install. There. And so now you should have travel on all that and nothing's wrong. That's good. Over here, I'm going to take our pump, or not our pump, sorry, our choke pull off. And I'm just going to reinstall that. Okay. 
Is it there? Uh, some kits actually have a security cover that goes over this so you can't mess with the choke. This one does not. Go, and this goes... in like... you can't see this, like that. And that, if I recall, goes like that. And there's a screw here. As you can see, I did lightly clean my choke plate here. And it's also lightly oiled on either end, and it moves just beautifully. Oh, did I put that in backwards? I do believe I put that in backwards, didn't I? Oh, no, the electric choke's just not actually set yet. Okay. So, yes, electric choke. This thing over here on the side... I've seen people completely just disable or remove this to put it in place a manual choke. Really, you shouldn't have to do that as I snap this in. The electric choke is quite simply a coil of bimetallic material. Um, you apply 12 volt voltage across this and it just simply uncurls itself um, when it heats up. And when it does that, it will slowly allow the choke to open up on its own before finally the choke unloader will just hold it open completely. And it'll stay like that until the engine cools off. You don't have to mess with a choke. It's really nice. But I've taken this one off here for this work. So now I have to adjust everything. And I do believe I've already screwed this up. I actually have this like installed incorrectly, so I gotta snap this back off again. Yeah, and it goes the other way around. Here we go. And just snap that back in place. All right. So, let's see here. I have this metal disc here. Note the dimple in the bottom here. There's a screw it lines up with here. And that keeps that aligned in place. I want to unload the choke so I can actually, there we go. So when you put this in, gasket goes on. What should go on? Oh, no, I just have it on backwards, okay. gone. You have this retainer ring here. It goes on like that. And what I've done here on this, um, if, if we get around to a rebuild, I'll explain. But before I took this off, there is a set of marks along the side of the electric choke. And where it was sitting on the long mark, I've just simply scratched it here. That way, when you put this in, and then you rotate it into spot, into its position again, you see how the choke just closed there? So it is now adjusted and set to exactly where it was before. Okay, 
So you have three screws that come along with this. And where is, okay, there it is. On this ring here, you'll have a, like one particular piece that will clamp slightly odd, and that's actually part of the security mechanism, if I can get it to fit in there correctly. Hmm, why is that not... Okay, there we go. Now it's interesting, some rebuild kits will come with regular screws for the cover here and retainer for the electric choke. Other times you will, like you will receive a set of um, breakaway screws. The idea is that once the choke is set, you're not supposed to modify it again. And they just, they get the point across by a case of once you tighten those screws down, you snap the heads off. Um, Honestly, if you're in a region which allows you to not require those, it's fantastic because then it makes minor adjustments such as choke pull off um, easy to do. Okay. Now what I'm doing here is I just need to get that set back into place. There we go. And tighten it down. All right, so that's good, that's good, that's all good. Now we're missing something on the back here and that is the stepper motor. So let me explain to you what the stepper motor is. Uh, it's this doohickey right here. As I've mentioned before, it's a two-phased um, electronic stepper motor. Same thing you'd find in a floppy drive or a hard drive or stuff like that. What it does is that these two pins here are driven in and out of the block to help either lean out or enrich the mixture as uh, directed by the computer. There's no feedback mechanism in this itself. If this ever unplugs or if it jams or missteps, this will throw the computer out of whack. This will throw the carburetor out of whack. Um, one thing you do is just lightly oil it. And what I've done is that um, first off, never grab it by the pins. This plastic phenolic disc down here, um, yeah, that will break. But I've just simply gone in there and you put a little bit of oil into the rack and you want to make sure that you have a nice, clean or somewhat clean motion of the pins all the way through its actuating cycle. Okay, so that's all right. There is a spring that goes in the middle. There is this gasket, you cannot put this in upside down. One pin is larger than the other, but you can lose the spring. So that's why I say when you work on this, take the whole carb out of the vehicle. And there we go. That's now seated. And what I'll do is that it comes with four Torx heads on this one. And if I can persuade this, I'll drop them in. And that requires, nope, wrong size. That. Come on. You gotta do this one-handed here, which sucks. There you go.
go. And then just tighten those in a cross pattern. There we go. And we're almost done here. So we can temporarily put these two screws in the front. Because remember, we still got to put the Solvac back on this. And oh, I already put that button already in there. And we'll put our two large ones in the back. Liking. There we go. Now I can go back to those two screws under here and tighten those. And I can tighten these. All right, so we can have this gasket. Do one last check to make sure everything is working here. All right, let's close that up. And it's just these three screws here. There, and there, and this plugs in there, and there we go. So the carburetor is now reassembled. I got that. I got these two gaskets here again. So I'm going to go throw this into the car now, and I bet you good money it'll still work completely fine. Will it fix my problem? Well, I hope. Whoops, okay, yep, there was one other thing I completely forgot about because it was the first thing we discovered. Remember this broken gasket here? The one that attached the carburetor to the uh, insulating plate here for the intake manifold? We still gotta deal with that there. Well, remember, the kit came, or what's left of one of my used kits has these ones in here. So you'd say, well, just swap those in. Not so fast. Notice on here that we have these two cutouts on either side of the gasket. And on this one here, it's on the ends. Now, this is very important. If you look at the insulating block, you'll notice that those cutouts match up with here as well. So it's designed specifically for this gasket to sit on top. If you put this one here, well, they serve no purpose because there's no cutouts there. So what the hell does this do? And this is very important. On the carburetor itself, if you look underneath, on the very bottom, we actually have an air circuit right here that goes around. And what happens, this goes over top of it, and you can see how on this side they don't do anything, so you can flip it over, no problem. But on this side, this allows vacuum from the plate through those two notches right here to go into this channel here. This actually provides your manifold vacuum for your choke pull-off, as well as whatever's on this circuit right over here. So that's very important. If you put this one in place, yes, you still enter into that circuit from the sides, because the, but because the block here doesn't have um, notches on the ends, you wouldn't get vacuum. So that's very important. So what I'm gonna do here instead, because that means I don't have any spares, uh, is that this damaged one, I'm gonna put that one upside down on the underside of the block facing up against the intake manifold where that break is far less important. And the one that was on the bottom now goes on the top and we can reassemble the carb like that.